More about the holiday of Sukkot is Chaim Millispin, the founder of the Aliyah Return Center, who is joining us from uh, northern Israel. Hello and uh, Hag Sameach. Chag Sameach, Chag Sameach. Indeed, I am at the Sea of Galilee. That's that sea lake behind me, the Sea of Miracles. Uh, what I wanted to say about Sukkot, about tabernacles, you know, it's really that King David wrote that there's this, this uh, all nations you have created will come. And, and right now, nations can't come here. You know, there's even a prophecy in Zechariah 14 about if those nations don't come on, on the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot, then they won't get rain. And it even says about a, a plague if they won't come. Now, they can't come right now. And, and so people want to still make a difference. They still want to be part of this adventure that is the Holy Land. And so what I'm seeing is that there's a tangible way right now. We as a charity, we're used to having lots of people. I mean, we'll do in the city uh, like a big major sukkah. We'll have 83 volunteers. We'll just have dancing and songs. And, and, it's, and it's really people that are saying, you know what? It's not enough to have a Greek philosophical understanding of, of wow, Israel's important today, but to have a, a you know, more of a Hebraic action-orientated understanding of we can work and physically get our hands dirty and help Israel. And when they can't do that, I don't know if you know, in 2000, what was it, 2019, there was 4.55 million tourists mm. and, and who care about Israel, who can't. And now when those and many more uh, who want to come here can't get here, well, we're offering a way that they can tangibly, practically help even if they're physically not here. For example, just below, you can hardly see it, but we've opened a new, uh, this lone soldier house, our second one. And we didn't do it. I mean, I got no money, but it's people around the world who just love Israel said, we want to be a tangible hands-on. And so there's a, and the mayor and everybody and chief Chabad rabbi, and we, we were able to open this lone soldier house, but it didn't end there. Some other people said, hey, we'll keep, we'll keep, we'll keep blessing. So how are people going to be able to participate you know, in what you're doing? Is it, you know, for those that obviously are not able to, uh, you know, fly and come into Israel, which we know there's a lot of frustrated people abroad that just can't get here. True. Well, yeah. So normally there's just such a celebration. They learn the whole Hora dance. They learn. They just learn the dances of Jerusalem, the dances of the Galilee, and and it, it's such an uh, jubilation. But they can't get here now, so we'll do an online thing. Where we'll do this sing together. We we've done this in Africa. We've done this in Canada. We've done this in different places in the world. Even places like Malaysia, uh, Singapore are now interested in a sing together. It's just learning a Hebrew song like Gesher Tzaru Meod or or any or a Sukkot song, and they'll learn a Hebrew song and then. They'll sing it together online. We got a new app we're trying to work on where they're able to do that. They'll record a video and we'll record a video and it all comes together like we would physically do. And that's one way we're able to engage them. Like I said, the other way is just keeping them really up to date about not just uh, these holidays, but like, for example, what happened in Holon when these 36 families were left stranded, immediate action, immediately people are like, we want to get them some food vouchers. Hey, we want to be able to get them a toothbrush. We want to, you know, yeah. and so it's like they're here in some way, but not mm. physically. Right, right, right. Yeah. So how, um, you know, after this past year, I mean, last year we were going through this pandemic as well. What's, uh, what's changed for you between Sukkot last year, you know, and this year as far as, you know, what you've been able to accomplish and, and pull together now that we have experience being isolated? Exactly. Well, this is the exact counterintuitive. You wouldn't guess that we'd be actually growing and expanding in this hard time. A lot of people are saying for us, it's just been very, very hard. We have our, our businesses are this, but for us, we're saying, well, when they can't, when the nation can't play their role written in the Bible to stand with Israel, to, to uh, be part of this story in some way uh, of, of free peoples. Well, actually, we have more and more interest. I imagine those millions of people are now online. So we've just, we've kind of turned into like, we're not as good as I-24. Mm -hmm. We're kind of like this media presence. We're trying to always, every step of the way, showcase tastes, flavors. We'll do, we have a virtual tour now of the whole land, 52 sites where we'll take people virtually and they can just 360 pictures and they look around and it feels like they're here. So we found that Israel, I think in general, should 
always be reaching out more because there's this kind of mentality like, well, it also there's this prophecy that all nations will come against us. So, ooh, let's kind of. But but I think the more that we open our arms, like like Israel's been doing now, even more digitally, virtually, we all become ambassadors raising up other ambassadors. Right. Wow, Haim, thank you so, so. much. We're going to continue uh, with more after the break, uh, so don't go anywhere. Stand by where you're in that beautiful, beautiful spot. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be back with much more after the commercial break.